We've now got a slew of new stasis weapons available and I've got to say that each and every single one of them is unique, bringing something to the table for every type of player. Whether that's a DPS monster, a solid ad clearing workhorse or just simply having that bit of Bungie's secret sauce sprinkled all over it. Now if you enjoy build crafting then this video is going to offer you something a little bit different that maybe you haven't seen before and stick around till the end to see it all come together showing you why these incredibly strong stasis weapons are the real deal and again point to that ease of use aspect for accessible damage boosts no matter your skill level. Stasis itself as an ability isn't offering anything new, but it's the way in which you can interact with them as a weapon damage type with your subclass, the way that they fit into your loadout and how they just trump anything we've seen before from new perk combinations to old favourites that are making a triumphant return. The newest addition to the sandbox is actually a new stasis perk, Chill Clip. Yep, that one just rolls straight off the tongue, but don't be confused by its more popular brother Kill Clip as they work in an entirely different way. Direct hits with the top half of the magazine cause a detonation that slows nearby targets. This perk is similar to the other stasis perks Headstone and Cold Steel in that it actually directly links in with the stasis subclass aspects and fragments and along with the new volatile rounds buff that you can apply to void weapons this season, it shows the direction Bungie are heading towards in terms of new weapon perks especially as we round out all the new subclass 3.0 updates this year. Direct hits with Chill Clip will apply a 50 times slow stack on direct hits to both the target and nearby enemies. This means that multiple hits will freeze targets and will trigger any effects you have on your stasis subclass such as ice flare bolts where you'll create stasis seekers on shattering frozen targets or even to gain class ability energy from the whisper of refraction. You can currently only get this new perk on 3 weapons with 2 of them being new stasis power weapons, the Palmyra B rocket launcher and the Typhon grenade launcher. A chill clip power weapon could actually become really useful in high level end game content later in the season, especially when the Grandmaster Nightfalls and the Master version of the raid are released. Speaking of the raid, you can actually get chill clip on a new and first ever stasis fusion rifle, Deliverance. You can pair it with the new compulsive reloader perk so that you always have a full magazine and therefore always have the chill clip perk active and ready to go. As it's a new raid weapon, it also comes with the Soul Drinker Origin trait, whereby you'll regain health depending on the number of hits before reloading. So if you're using half of your magazine before reloading to keep Chill Clip to its maximum uptime with Deliverance, you'll also be getting a good chunk of health back too. Now it's time for that secret sauce, and as it turns out there's two particular stasis weapons that do indeed have all the secret sauce this season. Crate is an excellent auto rifle and it takes me back to the days of using the now sunset hollow words from Dead Orbit. We can't start anywhere though without talking about the somewhat broken Adagio perk which is meant to lower its rate of fire after a kill but it doesn't at the moment because of a bug, so it dishes out some incredible damage. Bungie might end up fixing this, which if they do, fortunately there's some great perks waiting in reserve. I can't talk about it anymore though without mentioning subsistence. You may have already picked it up on your funnel web but on this auto rifle with its larger standard magazine size and especially when it's paired with any of the damage boosting perks, it will be the best ad clear weapon you could ever want. Just take a look at this from the raid. I mean, I'm just shooting for an entire age, no manual reloads in sight, subsistence is doing all the work for me and we're also proccing the new vice stinger origin trait. This new trait is very potent as simply damaging an enemy has a small chance to reload the magazine and also increase movement speed. With both of these activating at pretty much the same time, it really does make these vice weapons stand out from the others for both their ad clear and even high damage potential. Headstone in the final column will synergize perfectly with your stasis subclass builds or even just to do excellent stasis firefly damage regardless but you can also have a ton of fun with Focused Fury. This gives a 20% damage boost for 10 seconds after hitting half of your magazine as precision hits. Combine this perk with your local div bitch and you've got an easy damage boost and a fun little mini game to play with your fire team. It's such a good weapon that my beloved Chroma Rush has been instantly vaulted. Reed Regret also kind of stumbled into the secret sauce, getting its toes all sticky this season, as this DPS monster we've all come accustomed to now also has access to new perks, but as it's a vice weapon, it too also has the powerful vice stinger origin trait. That old god roll of triple tap paired with either Vorpal or Firing Line will still pump out the DPS, but with the new trait, 
the weapon can technically just reload itself even with triple tap activating repeatedly. Doing this can and in very rare circumstances mean that you can empty an entire 20 plus round magazine without reloading once. Even if you've got old adept versions, it'll be worth swapping it out for just a basic drop from Saint-14 in the tower using a few trials engrams, just to try get a new one with triple tap or clown cartridge. Fortunately, aside from the new crate auto rifle, the Typhon grenade launcher, the Persis scout rifle or redruget, all of the new stasis weapons introduced in season 16 can be crafted at the relic on Mars. Can we though just please normalise using shape instead of crafting? Like, come on, it says it right here. Also, normalize hitting that subscribe button too if you haven't already. Weapon shaping is still a sore subject among a lot of players, whether that's due to the material caps, the limited red deep sight resonance weapon drops, or just the cost to reshape weapons with perks you've already used, it clearly still has a lot of room to manoeuvre and will likely be refined in future updates. However, there's a few stasis weapons you need to look out for right now. There's three excellent picks from Season of the Risen that I think you absolutely should be shaping. The Fortless Sniper Rifle is one you should definitely be keeping your eye on. Standing still in a well of radiance for DPS phases is a thing of the past. Firing Line is the best DPS boosting perk you'll want to get and the old faithful rapid hit will still do wonders with it. But with perks like Overflow boosting the magazine size on picking up special or heavy ammo, or even Perpetual Motion to give a good overall stat bump, these can't be overlooked especially if you're going to craft it. Recurrent Impact will once again be one that will go under the radar as rapid fire machine guns just don't get the love they deserve, despite the excellent high burst DPS and mod synergy they offer. Again, it will easily mould itself into the mobile DPS that's evolving in year 5, with both field prep and perpetual motion working well with firing line. Palmyra B is one that we recently dived deep into, and if you've seen any of the recent raid race clips from the top teams, you'll have noticed it being used. That's because its auto-loading holster perk along with explosive flight and its tracking rockets make it a really great pick for easy to use pick up and play DPS. It's easily craftable too, only requiring one pattern to unlock at the relic. If you do like rockets, then this one is a must. Now these stasis weapons, especially the heavy hitting ones you'll use for damage phases, easily offer you the best synergy with a bunch of elemental well mods. Font of Might's 25% damage boost is easily accessible on tap, as stasis is arguably the easiest of elemental wells to create. Elemental shards will turn your stasis shards you create via any of the harvest aspects on your stasis subclasses into elemental wells. You can get these to track towards you using the Whisper of Conduction, so whether you're freezing, slowing or shattering enemies or crystals, you can have this boost ready to go. If you're main in stasis weapons, elemental armaments will create wells incredibly often, as will ordnance or melee well maker depending on your build setup. If you're running solo and use elemental charge, you can even add an extra 20% damage with high energy fire, but the real kicker is this one, Supreme Well Maker. This by itself is something you should definitely consider using, especially if you're in a fire team. Simply casting your super will create free stasis wells near you. Now obviously for DPS scenarios, you won't be using Behemoth or the Shadebinder, but if you get your Titan Bubble Bro to use this, they'll drop free stasis wells for you to collect and benefit not only from the Weapons of Light, but also Font of Might which also stacks. Now if somebody is using Banner Shield for the boosted 40% weapon buff it offers, it absolutely makes sense for them to use Supreme Wellmaker as your bonus stasis damage will more than make up for their lack of damage output. As a solo Revenant Hunter, using a Silence and Squall Super with Star Eater Scales is still an underrated endgame pick, but will pair seamlessly with the Supreme Wellmaker mod. Even just two or three stasis users in a six player fire team will cause carnage with such a setup, making your DPS weapons like the updated infinite ammo redruget deal huge damage numbers. If you add in elemental time dilation along with multiple copies of the font of might, you'll be getting upwards of 30 seconds of increased damage, more than enough for any extended damage phase in raids, dungeons or nightfalls. This is why it's clear to me that stasis weapons are absolutely meta picks right now in Destiny 2. 
You just can't simply create the damage boost required easily to match other damage types. Solar, Arc and Void Elemental Wells will all be created at the spot you defeated an enemy, meaning that you'll waste precious seconds either before or during a DPS phase collecting them. Obviously, you can make it work. But the ease of use aspect is once again peeking out above the crowd and these stasis weapons make it a really straightforward choice. There's still a lot being figured out in the new sandbox for year 5, but as far as I can tell, these stasis weapons have the potential to be there or thereabouts for the foreseeable future. If you're really interested in the craftable stasis weapons we've gone through today, there's a really super easy and quick way to level any of them up to unlock the enhanced perks. This short video will show you exactly what to do in less than 2 minutes, 